All-Star game is in Dallas, the first three-point contest. And he just starts looking at guys, doesn't say a word, and, and people are getting kind of nervous. And then he finally speaks and says, I'm just, just looking to see who's going to finish second. Some pure trash talking and just general bravado. And the theatrics of, of it all was made for Larry. And Larry would back up his boast by not only winning the contest, but blowing away the competition with a phenomenal shooting display. had my name on it for a week now and I knew I was going to win this thing. I've been practicing it. My teammates said I wasn't going to win it, but I, I came back and uh, lucked out, really. Bird would luck out again the next year, but in 1988, it looked like his luck had finally run out. He certainly doesn't have that normal Bird rhythm going for him. Come on, Dave. Seconds remaining. He has only seven. It has to be 15. That's eight. Making nine. And ten. And eleven as we're counting. Still got to drop one here quickly. 14. This is a tie for the money. Yo! He knew exactly what the score was. He knew that that ball was going to win the competition for him. And it's almost like he did it in dramatic fashion just to make it more fun. He knew it when he let it go and was headed for the winner's circle. He felt control like a conductor, like a maestro. Now they clear aside for Larry. This guy was going to do one thing almost every night that really spun your head around, made you do like I couldn't believe this was happening. Bird to Vincent to Bird. He was playing chess and everybody else was playing checkers. He was three moves ahead of everybody else. And you never knew what he was going to do, but you knew it was going to be something special. Bird steals it. You can see it coming, and look at the pass to McHale. Isn't that beautiful? He would do a head fake, or he would do this, and the guy would turn, and he would just fake the crap out of guys. Larry used to come in the locker rooms. He'd be getting his ankles taped, and he'd say, you know, hey, ball boy, run in and go find the scoring record in this building. You know, he needed those kind of challenges. Bird with the step. Talk about told Robert Reedy the other day that he should have stayed in preaching. <laughs> that was funny. He had 50 points. And you know, Larry Bird ain't never played no great defense. He's, like, sagging off a little bit. So he tell the guy, you can't shoot, but I'm not wearing about guard. You I said, man, shoot it in the face. Shoot it. Mark hit a three-pointer on Larry, on Larry Bird and uh and said and said, and said take a look at that. And Bird just came right back and hit three three three-pointers in a row and just basically basically said to him, and we all heard it that you're out of your league. Or he'd say, Danny, give me the ball, or DJ, give me the ball. I got this guy in the torture chamber down here. Why the guy was standing right there listening to him say it. <laughs> the ball went to Larry, and Isaiah was all out of, out of whack. He had the ball at three-point range. He goes, hey, 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 who's guarding me? Everybody looked around. He just stood there, held the ball, and Isaiah said, ah, oh, he ran out there and just shot it three-pointer. Too late. That's not trash. That's just fact. You can't check me. I'm going to get 40 if you don't guard me. I got 20 already halftime. <laughs> Bird, he, he's hitting the list. Uh, he'll look at you like, hey, what you doing out here? You better call somebody else. I even heard him tell, uh, tell the coach, hey, look, coach, you better get somebody else out here to guard me because I'm killing this guy. In last year's playoffs, Person was out to make Bird eat his words while adding a few choice comments of his own. Chuck Person, he definitely has his reputation. During the playoffs, he just went AWOL, you know, and he just went to work. You can see this.
the idea is a little special because um, I've known Chuck for a while and we've always had run-ins, but uh, it always seems like I, I get the last word. <laughs> Bird's ability to get the final word is made for many a magic moment. And this week, we relive a game when Larry was in rare form and Xavier McDaniel was eager to lend an ear. High game. They call the time out. He said, you know I'm going to get it. And I said, I know I'm going to be waiting. And then the time out, I'm going for a play, and I tried this for more run. All right, uh, then she got the ball. You go over here and uh, you pass to Kevin. Then you go to the corner. Then why would you come over? Then about that time, Larry steps in and says, uh, Coach, uh, why don't you just give me the ball and tell everybody to get out of the way? Now, after the time out, we walk back on the court. Larry's going down to his position. So he tells the baby, he says, I'm getting the ball. Yeah, he said, I'm going to get it right here. I'm going to shoot it right in your face. Ten seconds. Five, and Bird has the basketball. Look out. Two seconds on the clock. And, you know, he was like, I didn't mean to leave two seconds on the clock. I walked back to the little sideline like, damn. Larry Bird just phenomenal the way that he will contribute to Time after time.